All right. How's it going? Never mind, don't answer that question. I can't hear you. We're going to install Python 3, the latest Python 3, in an older version of Debian GNU Linux. This version of Debian is, um, I'm running it in a virtual machine inside of Windows. So all this stuff's regular Windows and then everything in here. This is the LXDE. It's a lightweight desktop environment for Linux. This is that menu system just to kind of help you tell it apart. I can actually go full screen with it or what am I looking for here? I need to integrate it. Seamless hostel. All right, now it's a little more integrated. So what I'm gonna do is open up just a regular terminal. There's a root terminal or a standard user terminal. I try and shy away from the root terminal, especially if I'll need to go back and forth between a regular user and uh, root. So anyway, in Windows, this would be like a non-administrator prompt and this would be like an administrator prompt, but the cool thing in Linux is it's real easy to switch between them. And I'll just double click this to go full screen. So the deal is this this Debian was um, Debian 7. I installed it some years ago whenever I first got into like cloud stuff and I had deployed some servers for people and Debian 7 was the latest release at that time. And if you've done a lot of server work and you've experimented with the distros, I probably don't have to explain to you why I think Debian's the best one. Um, they all have their pros and cons, but as far as deploying to a public facing internet cloud type of thing, virtual private server, in my opinion, Debian, um, Debian takes the cake. It's definitely the best one. They use slightly older packages that are known to be more robust and stable. And I could go on and on. And there's just little different things. If you do like typical lamp stacks that little scripts that really help accelerate that work, if you're into that. But anyway, I'll get to it. So like I said, this is an older one, so it might be different than if you're using a, a newer distribution. You know, you might have Python 3.4, 3.5 or whatever. I think this one's like Python 3. This one's 3.2, so it's pretty old. And then if I just do a regular Python, I also have a 2.73. Those ones were installed with apt the Debian package, one of the Debian package managers, excuse me. So that's a little different. What we're going to do now, and that's that, you know, Debian 7, AKA Wheezy has fallen completely out of support now. It's, it doesn't get any security patches, anything. I've kept this one updated, so it should be reasonably secure, but it, um, it's now changed to the archive. Anyway, I'll get to that. So what we're going to do is a sudo which of course means super user do to run. This is basically how you run an admin command in the Linux command prompt, just a one off. And then nano is kind of like one of the notepads for the terminal. It's my favorite little editor, etc. is where the system wide configurations are stored. apt is the name of the package manager and sources dot list is the, uh, where we can find the, download the packages from. So all these ones that are commented out down here that say like deb, HTTP, those ones used to be good, but now that it's got pushed back into like just oblivion, it's now at archive.debian.org slash debian, da da da. Wheezy. I'm going to go ahead and add contrib and non-free to this one too. They probably don't have anything in them, but it shouldn't hurt. So anyway, if you are using a really old version of like Debian, like Wheezy, Jesse, um, Debian 7, Debian 8, you may want to do this. Um, if you happen to catch one of the mainline Jesse distributions, then like the Intel x86 ones and all that, that's still in long-term support, I'm pretty sure. So you don't have to do this quite yet, but uh, what is it? In about a year from now, this is the summer 2019, end of summer 2019, um, in the middle of next summer, it will it will be just like this for Jesse, for all the Jesse as well, as far as I know. So anyway, just uh, make sure 
that your etc app sources list file has at least that line and if you're getting a lot of BS errors then make sure it has only that line um, I have to get rid of this security update thing because those are no bueno so I'll do control X and then it's asking me um, it's modified do I want to save I'll hit Y and press enter if you get an error right there you're gonna have to just back out um, you forgot to type sudo or you're running as a regular user so you won't have permission to edit that but anyway that's all saved so now we'll do as a super user we'll do apt key update um, that might not really do anything but that's supposed to check and make sure that your keys are up to date and everything so that might not be a bad idea we'll do and most of these commands should work on any Debian based distro um, including Ubuntu the package names if you get any errors with the package names I typed in even in a more modern version of Debian just uh, do a search for a really general similar package name in your distro and I'm sure it's there in some form or another or just look it up on the internet but for the most part this should all apply so we'll do an app get update oh I forgot to run sudo so one trick if you type a really long command is just type that and it will run the previous command as a super user and so it's just kind of pinging all those servers and everything and seeing what they have getting a list of the packages all right and then the normal procedure is just to run like an app get upgrade to just do a simple upgrade of any outstanding packages that need to be upgraded and then I always throw in a show upgraded which kind of lets you oop, kind of let you double check what might be upgraded in this case I should be all up to date um, this next line is really the only kind of tricky one as far as I'm concerned so right here I have the same thing broken down into like sections or whatever but this is sort of my cut and paste one um, this is from older documentation I I comment those out I, I'm not using those right now so what we're going to do is install the build essentials and that will pull in some stuff I'm pretty sure that pulls in like the GCC compiler if you don't have it and stuff around that I haven't looked exactly what's in that package in quite a while you can search that out just search Debian build essential and it will give you some details this is lib and curses uh, and this W right here stands for wide character support and version 5 and of course the developer packages which provides like the header files and stuff that you need when you're compiling that support into a into a program so that right there is basically that's gonna give you uh, better control or I mean that allows Python to have control over the terminal better control over the terminal GDBM why is that escaping me what that is probably because it's not important I think that's a database that's the GNU database manager so that's like an alternative that's the one that Python wants by default um, I'll try not to take forever like I usually do on these kind of things but somewhere around here there's an option for maybe I didn't put it in here but you can pull in the Berkeley database here it is libdv db so that's basically an alternative right there is this libdb dash dev but we're gonna go ahead and just build it with this stock one but we'll just leave this um, as you can see it's right there we're gonna go ahead and pull in the I imagine it's just a few hundred K extra K or something I could be wrong <laughs> could be like a hundred megabytes but whatever um, libc6 is of course the GNU uh, C library and so that's all the header files for that I build essentials might pull that in but for whatever reason I've brought that in maybe some trial and error in the past needed it or some blog or something recommended it zlib compression library SQL light light version F SQL TK is what gives you that idle um, the editor and if you want to do anything with some graphical the standard graphical interface stuff you'll need that and then of course the SSL support I forget what this is I think it's fonts um, 
this is like a portable portable um, type of library I think it's like socket services or something from maybe Netscape or somebody originally Netscape socket services that's another one that I'm not too sure if it's even needed but whatever and then it doesn't even look like I'm pulling in the dev on that hmm. I don't know we'll see what happens if we get some errors okay library line that's the kind of thing where you can push the up arrow key and go back and see what you've typed XZUtils is to support the more modern LZMA type of compression. Um, right here, you can see one option is to download the Python. Here's, you know, I've copied the link to the. It's not really an FTP site. It's www. They just say that for like historic reasons. But um, one option. This is a tar gzip file, and that's pretty standard. Um, even an old school low resource server, whatever, no bells and whistles is going to be able to extract that package, but that one's going to be significantly larger than the XZ uh, based LZMA based package. So where was I? So anyway, this is what we're going to need to get. This is this is like the LZMA utils because we're going to get the smaller one, um, smaller download. Why not? It's the year 2000, right? And then. Wget will use right here to actually pull this file off the server. There's other options, but that's just the easiest way. So anyway, I'll just shut up and get to this. Where was I at here? We did all that. Okay, so now I'm going to paste in that app get line. There it is. You'll I guess have to type that yourself. I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, I've pretty much installed all the packages necessary. And if you are upgrading a really old version of Debian, you're most likely going to get some stuff like this. After I switched and changed that archive repository, it's just dumb. It doesn't know. Um, this is one of those problems I've never quite been able to iron out completely in any sort of universal way. I think it's kind of ridiculous. But anyway, you can see right here we're trying to pull in lib, that lib dev, these three different development um, header packages or whatever. And it depends on this version, which was the latest version across the lifetime of this, um, this particular Debian distro, right? But it's not going to be installed. Okay, well, why not? And then... You come down here and it's like uh, this one depends on this version, but this version is going to be installed. And if you look, the version number is exactly the same, but this one has this like slightly newer update qualifier appended to it. And Debian packages never deal well with this. Like when I do custom packages, I just do the, the package, the official package version, and I leave off all this kind of crap just because of this reason. Um, I don't, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like it should be like maybe a warning. Do you want to continue? Yeah. Okay. Uh, then the same thing with the TK one. It's you know, whatever. So I've tried all the stuff like you know the Stack Overflow recommendations and all that. Very frustrating. But anyway, here's the deal. I've already corrected this problem. What you do is you install Aptitude instead of just AppGit because AppGit is um. It's pretty basic, so we'll use AppKit. Got to remember to sudo. One trick: you do have permanent access to the shell. You can just do sudo bash, and then bam, you're at a root terminal, right? So uh, just don't forget that, and remember to back out later. It saves having to type sudo all the time, and usually that sudo bash, like even if you don't have like super user permissions, but you do have sudo permissions that seems to always be like a loophole to get through so I just use that exclusively but anyway um, where am I here on my scribbly notes okay we're gonna install aptitude app get install aptitude and I've already installed it the newest version so it will probably bring up a thing and be like oh we're gonna pull in these files is that cool and then press enter or wire or whatever to continue and that should go well for you 
otherwise you might as well just start reading stack overflow if you care or try and do a dist upgrade to um to a newer version of debian or something i don't know it, it gets crazy at that point so we've got aptitude now we can do aptitude it's just like apt or apt get aptitude um, we can do install and then we can paste in all that same junk that but we can skip that and just go like that because we're replacing that part so basically aptitude is a little bit smarter and it tries to figure out what can happen here and so it actually gives you an option instead of just crying about it and it says hey we can just keep these packages where they're at um, one option is to try and remove them and that's what I had done before but let's do a quit and I'll just show you what happens so we'll do um, apt git and I'll do a purge which removes the configuration files as well or you know I'll just try remove because I already know purge doesn't work app get remove lib db dash dev it's not installed where's a bad one app get remove tk dash dev um, tk 8.5 dash dev Um, lib ffi dash dev. You gotta be kidding me. Ffi 5.1. Huh. At some point, I got it to like try and remove one of those packages, and all of a sudden, it just wanted to pull off like delete half of my system. It was like, okay, we're gonna get rid of your web browser and all this stuff because of a dependency issue. So there's something going on where Debian won't kick in and just do this little bump upgrade for some reason. If anybody has any magic trick that will work in this scenario, I'm, I'd love to hear it. So anyway, you do that aptitude line like that, like I had done. And then when it gives you those options, go ahead and hit Y or just press enter and it will pick the capital letter for you. It'll keep all of them at the current version. Let's see here. Double check that it looks like. Okay, we'll see how that works out. Okay, then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna back out of root now and just hit exit and get back to my regular user terminal. Just hit CD by itself to make sure I'm in my home directory, and then we'll do a wget, and it will be https colon slash slash www.python.org forward slash ftp forward slash python slash 3.7.4 like 3.7 point a million or something's out by the time you watch this then go ahead and just download that version this may even apply to 3.8 3.9 but I don't know I can't predict the future uh, so we got that and then we need Python try and get the case right too on all this uh, 3.7.4 and then you can either do the TGZ which if you know you have plenty of space and whatever just go ahead and do that it's more compatible I'm gonna try and be a little bit gangsta ish and get the freaking XZ file which is way smaller enter not found oh yeah um, you gotta do tar dot XZ on that and it's downloading it I already have it but Okay, so let me do this real quick. Um, okay, let me clear out the screen. 
so these are the Python files I have. It did that dot one because I already had it, so I can just actually uh, Python 374. We'll just get rid of all of them. Or no, I don't want to have to re-download. Python 374 TGZ. And then uh, tar xc.1. OK, now I should just have just that one left. Sorry about that. All right, here's the trick to unpack it. Tar um, extract verbose. And the file is called Python. You just start typing in and hit tab. Should auto complete it. If it pauses halfway, then just type the next unique character and hit tab again, and it should go for you. So this should expand it into a directory um, named Python. Da 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 da. Most packages, most like official packages for uh, source code on Linux type operating systems, they're usually going to unpack it to a directory. But if you don't know, you can throw I think a T in here. Let's check it out. Instead, we'll throw T. Tar. A lowercase T is what we're going for here. Where to go? Gotta love digging for crap at the terminal. So see how it says T list, list the contents of an archive. Um, TVF, that's how I should have done it right there. So I just did a tar dash dash help to get this. So we'll just do it just like they have it. TVF. And there's all the files, the zillions of files. And as you can see right here, there's this prefix on it. Python da 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 slash. So you know that like every single file in here is going to go under that directory. So that's one way you can check with some package if you're not totally clear about it. So we're going to do tar xvf and this should work whether or not you got the tgz package or, or this one. Tar xvf pi tab boom. And this is the source code. This isn't like Python the finished version. But it's really easy and the way that they compile is like so many Linux packages compile like this. Okay, so now we can go CD, pi, da, 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 boom. And then do an LS if you want to see what's in there. And the the uh, bright green stuff is executable scripts. And then the dark blue stuff is folders. And the light gray stuff are just file, like text type of files. Okay, so where are we in this step now? We've extracted, we've changed into the directory, now we're at the configure step. This is pretty standard right here, so I'll go ahead and clear it. Um, you do a dot slash in Linux. The uh, If you want to run something in the directory you're in, like most of the executables are in one or very few system-wide directories, and that's the only place Linux will run executables from, just to be safe, you know, that way somebody can't like, um, you know, if I run ls to get this directory listing or clear or whatever, somebody could pit that right here in, you know, a package. And then when I run ls, I'd accidentally run their ls script. So we have to explicitly say dot, which represents the directory we're currently in, slash. And uh, there's that configure program in bright green right, right there. So we're going to run that configure. But we want to do a dash dash help standard. And this gives us all these cool little options and flags and stuff. Most of them are pretty much standard for configure, make, install type of source packages. So configures Python 3.7 do adapt to many kinds of systems. This is the magic. Some people don't like this, but this is so crazy because it's like for so long you were able to custom compile packages like almost as easy as you could just double click install them on Windows or something. So we were in the help, which is telling us all this cool stuff right here. Something to take note of is this prefix and exec prefix. Basically, if you just change prefix, that's going to change the tree that virtually everything's installed under. So it's going to default to user local. Um, normally, the packages that are like if Debian provided its own, this old Debian, if it provided its own Python package, 
then it would install it in user. And it does, it has old packages and they are installed in user. Um, it's pretty common when you custom compile a package to install it to this local folder to se segregate it so that you aren't intermixing with packages and overwriting files that might be uninstalled. And it just gets ugly if you do that. So we're going to go ahead and leave that the same. And then exec prefix is basically the bin folder where that's going to be. And it defaults to being under uh, user local. So it's going to default to user local bin. But you can change that individually. And then there's all these. So if you want to get crazy, um, you can make your own Debian package. It's not that hard. If you want me to show you how to do it, just leave a note in one of the comments and I'll do that. I was going to do that on here, but I decided it's a little bit out of scope. And as you can see, I ramble on forever. So I just want to get through it. So these are all kind of like universal features that are look like ones that are OK. Enabled share is a good one to consider. That's going to do the shared library support so that it's not necessarily just like hard coded into the program. We'll do like .so files, which are like DLLs on Windows. Um, See if there's any other ones to take note of. Pidey bugs what the official distribution recommends for like people who are trying to like improve the C Python itself, the Python interpreter itself. But we're not we're doing it for production. We want it to run fast. We're not necessarily concerned about that. Link time optimizations, they claim that they didn't notice any speed up with any of that. What else? This is kind of par for the course with these config files is just give them a quick skim before, you know, look up any options you're unsure about. Um, we could even tag these on there and say, you know, set C flags equals whatever, M arch, all that stuff. Um, on 64 bit Linuxes, that kind of stuff isn't really as necessary as it used to be. I mean, you could do it and dial in a little bit of optimization like that, but in the past, it was like optimized for 486, which was horrible because 486 ran like crap on anything that wasn't a 486. So I don't know why they would do that. So it was important back then to try and do that, especially with Debian stuff. But anyway, I've already done a bunch of research and I could tell you pretty much what options we need. So we want enable optimizations. Optimization. Can't remember if that's plural or not. Enable optimizations plural. Cool. I think the Python official documentation got that wrong. Like it's singular in there. Somebody should submit a a patch for that. Okay, because it's not going to be me. Anyway, enable optimizations. Uh, Enabled shared. Shared. What else? Let's try with system expat. You probably don't even have to do this. I'm just doing it because uh, word, if you go to um, Linux from scratch or maybe beyond Linux from scratch and look up Python 3.7 through there, uh, the version of Linux from scratch, I think is at 9.0 now. They basically that's a project where they teach you how to compile the whole Linux system from the ground up from scratch and then how to also build a bunch of popular applications from scratch. So I referenced that as well. And they recommended using these um, with the system expat. So that probably just avoids like building the Python specific included ones and then um, doubling down with redundant libraries on your <clears throat> thing. So I'm going to try that out. And we want pip because normally with a package supplied Python, you don't really care for pip. You can install with your package manager. You can install whatever you want. So it's kind of optional at that point. But since we know that our package manager isn't going to line up, we're going to want to install pip to make sure that we can manually, somewhat manually install those packages. Okay, there's also, you know, this would be the time to throw in the prefix or exec prefix if you want to change those. Some people use opt. You could do prefix dollar sign home, which would be your home folder. 
um, there is a long ass like with DBM lib order blah 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 if you do want to use that Berkeley database then you'll just have to reference that it was either in the Python build uh, just look up like build Python 3 and uh, either the Linux from scratch site or the official one we'll have more on that all right and hit enter Probably should have hit enter while I was blabbing. Sometimes this takes a long time. Let's just try to say by default. See what G plus plus is been set. That I just look for like weird things like missing, going to break in the future or whatever. All this yes, good. It's just detecting like oh this is a Linux system and you're using this instead of that and we want to enable optimizations but we don't want to enable debug so all that kind of stuff's looking good. Lots of checks. It's just making sure that it has all these utilities at its disposal. Who knows, it might not even use some of them. But Python's pretty mature, so my guess would be that it probably uses most of them, or that it can use most of them. But basically what it would do is it might stop at some point on you and yell and say, hey, couldn't find, you know, one of these things. Instead of saying, like, yes, it would say no, but it, like this one, obviously, it doesn't matter because it was able to use, like, this instead or something. But if it stops and yells at you and says it can't find something, just do a search for that thing it can't find in your distribution and see if there's a package, a very similar package to that install it run configure just like we did again and that's the trick and eventually it should go through so down here no errors it's all checking config status it creates and uh, looking good so it made it basically generated a make file oops it generated a make file for us so now if we do an ls we'll do it with the details and we can see that make file september 3rd both of these are September 3rd, not the July 8th date, so you can tell all the stuff that was just generated. Cool. So the next thing to do is actually to do a make and a make install. So we're still our regular standard user, and that's what you want to be when you run configure and make. You don't want to do that as root because this way it will, all the files are going to default to having like non root permissions, and then we can give if we ever do care in the future about like specifically giving something root permission we can do that but you don't want to just give something root permission because if you give a you know like the interpreter root permission then every script that runs on it effectively has root permission so we that's not a good practice but when you install of course you if you're going to install system wide at that point you need to be root so we just drop into root just to do that but anyway let's make the code this will build it this will um, actually run all these commands you're seeing these GCC commands on the left here like that that's the GNUC compiler so it's gonna it's basically and then this P thread is a very common multi-threading library for C it's just a bunch of garbage you can just consider this like the Linux command line version of a status bar it's like if it's moving every so often and not throwing out errors, then then the little the little stick is spinning on the screen, so to speak. This will probably take a long time. I imagine an hour or two even. I don't. Sometimes builds like this can take even overnight, but that was more back in the day, like single core processors and stuff. I think I have two. Two processes dedicated to this one here, or two uh, processor cores. That being said, settings. Or is it system processor? Two CPUs. All right, what I have for memory? Two gigs of memory. 
circle and of course you can shrink that down and uh, multitask go do something else if you want whatever okay so it looks like I ran into some issues which is cool one thing I forgot to mention that I want to mention before I forget in again is you can do like a make J three or whatever and what that's gonna do is gonna run make and multiple um, multiple threads basically so it kind of like allows one thing to be getting built while another thing is getting ready to be built maybe to fit it in simple terms um, some documentation actually recommends eight so if you've got like a really fancy processor do that uh, back in the day they used to recommend count the number of cores you have in your CPU and add one to it so if I have dual core set up then I'll just make it three you know and that way it can be doing it will be compiling probably at least two modules at a time and then that third one can be like getting ready to compile or that way it's it's usually pretty efficient but sometimes you'll end up with like a race condition if you do that and something might compile before or after so if it's not well tested with the the J flag I don't use that like if I if I'm going to prefer stability or I just want to make sure it compiles in one go or something I'll just leave obviously just like I did that's the simple way but it's also the way that takes the longest but yeah go ahead and try J3 and then if it fails you can try it again and sometimes it will just pick up and complete or sometimes you can just try it again and leave off the J and it will pick up where it left off and it will go single threaded from there but that's that your mileage may vary but anyway this is what happened like I went back to check on the screen after a little bit and it was here and it's like well I don't see any errors down here leaving directory whatever that looks good and I would think it was it's all fine it may have built it fine too since there's not any like obvious errors on this screen um, and we can scroll back up here a little ways and see like yeah no errors just whatever so what it's saying what it looks like it's saying is that um, it had trouble with the FFI thing because I had told it to use that system one. So maybe I didn't have the headers installed. And I think I ran that aptitude com command wrong with the stuff I was talking about where the, the Debian package manager was being stupid. I think that's what's going on here. So, um, you know, the FFI didn't work, which makes that suspect. The necessary bits to build these optional models were not found. SSL. TK enter to find the necessary bits. Look in that. Detect the module for the module's name. Deploy modules have been built by the make file instead. So those ones failed to build these C types. That one sounds important. Could not build the SSL module. Requires that. Libre SSL do not provide the necessary APIs. Okay, so let's start checking it out here. Just skimming over this last little stuff. So we got the FFI. I'm going to jot these down so I don't forget the FFI SSL TK enter. C types. C types might just be a result of something else not compiling we'll see they're automatically changing the modes on that that's all cool all right so let's do one as a root apt git install lib ffi dash deb which gave us the problems before that is to be installed okay so we're gonna go ahead and do that again and we're gonna run aptitude you probably most likely won't even be having this problem but at some point you most likely will so right here I'm gonna hit question mark and get some more information reject give up quit the program search for, so n will get uh, reject and search for another solution and we can use dot and comma to n dot and comma writing that down 
Okay. And to install packages. No. Downgrade the following packages. Downgrade that one to that one. Hmm. This is trippy because if that doesn't work, it could leave the whole system in a bad state. So we'll say, no, that's not good enough. No more solutions available. So we're gonna have to downgrade it. Let's try it, boom. Okay, fine. That's weird because I don't know if I was reading it wrong, but the terminology earlier acted like it should be installing this one. Okay, I guess I see what it means. It wanted to downgrade, but it should have been installing the one that was already there or something. Okay, that's that. And then uh, what else were we needing? Let's see if I can find that aptitude. Command line again. Let's run this one. All right. We still need this guy or gal or whatever. So. Oh yeah, duh. What am I thinking? I hit N, enter, and now I'm hitting Y, enter, to downgrade it, and then enter. And then we're going to need, which one, TK Dev. I'm going to hit N, and then wants to downgrade all those packages. Cool. Since, I mean, since that version number is so freaking similar, like the official version number is identical, which is a good sign. And then this like little patch level one is kind of like, as far as to my knowledge, that's the first Debian revision number. So like if I compiled, you know, if we made a font config package out of 2.90 and it took us, we published seven different versions of it. And then, you know, each version we're like, oh, you know, we should have done this a little bit different. So we repackage it, but it's, you know, basically the same version of the official software. We'd add that seven. But then this is all ambiguous. Once you get past that, it's just like, what? I don't have a clue what that means. You know what I mean? And whatever. So... And then this little qualifier, like, why didn't you guys just increment that? <laughs> you know, it's whatever. I don't get it. And if, you, if you're going to do it this way, fine. But why don't you just explain it in plain English or plain French or something somewhere? Anyway, I'll quit crying for a minute. It, so it's, do you want to accept the solution? I said originally no. And now it's like, all right, fine. We'll downgrade it. Do you want to accept that? Yeah, enter. And that should be it. We are now downgrading everything and installing those missing dev packages. But there may have been some other packages that needed to be installed too with that original command I was running with all the junk. Um, so these might have halted that from even happening. So just because these are installed doesn't mean everything that doesn't mean all the dependencies are installed so we'll go back to this long line and we'll just run it again and it will either say everything's installed like it says right now it's already at the newest version zero to upgrade zero to move 
All right, cool. So now we'll go ahead and do the make again. And this time I'm going to try J3. You know what? I'm going to control C to cancel and interrupt it. The reason I don't want to just do make again right now is because I was just thinking like dependencies were missing and stuff, so that means the configuration is going to be different on the script. And whenever you do anything where the config's different, you need to do a make, uh, I think it's disk clean. I haven't custom compiled in so long. And that should make it almost like we just unpack the package again. Like, almost. I mean, the make file, you can see. All these directories have been touched, so they're going to say September 3rd, but all the individual files are back to July 8th, it looks like, unless I'm missing one or two or whatever. Um, yeah, so all that's reset. You can see that the make file's gone. So anyway, we can just run configure again. Configure. I'm going to real quick do help again and just do one more quick scan through this and make sure that there was nothing... We should be able to get by with the system libraries again because um, we'll go ahead and try that because the dependencies, I can't remember what the shortcut, there's a shortcut to do a search for the command line. We need configure, enable, share, system, alright, let's try it again like that. This doesn't seem to be, da -da -da -da. it doesn't say like using cached something up here. That's good because if, I mean, it's not necessarily good or bad, but sometimes it'll say that and then you know like, okay, it's going off a previous run kind of, which can speed it up and it's still usually pretty smart. But the fact that it doesn't say it's going off a cached run is kind of good. That's hinting that it's probably going to reprobe everything and reconfigure itself fully. So that's good. One option too is just wipe out the directory and unpack it again. And then you know for sure you have a fresh thing and don't forget to run configure as a regular user. I better not be root. I'll be burnt. I've got to wonder how much faster this would run if it was just like a C program or something, a native program, because this is basically a bash script, and they run all right, but whenever you have to do anything long like that, a C program usually takes seconds versus minutes. Okay, so we're configured. Now we can do the make minus J, and I'm going to do three. So now it should be doing a totally fresh build with profile generation. Oh yeah, that's, it's not going to, profile generation is an optimization. Sometimes I see profiling information, I'm like, no, I don't want that info. It's kind of like debug info, but for speed instead of stepping through your code necessarily. Um, but this is profile guided optimizations. So what it does is it, it builds some stuff and then it runs some tests, some profile tests against it to see like, hey, is this optimization working better for this particular system or is this other? It's something that you really don't get with most Windows software because unless it's sort of like you're using the Unix-based tool chain on Windows, but you don't get that. Um, but Linux offers that. So that's one of the cool things with Linux. You can basically like tune the whole thing as if it was built and programmed specifically for your exact computer, you know. Anyway, once again, this will still probably take forever. If it crashes, um, just run make again. You don't have to run configure again unless it says it's missing a library or something similar like we just saw. But um, if it just crashes like some bizarre crash that you can't explain and you're using that J thing, just try run and make again without the J. If it crashes again after that, try it one more time. If it still crashes, then you probably have bigger issues. 
All right, so the build finished again. Looks like mostly successfully. This time the only issue is that SSL is still no, no bueno. Um, and I didn't really, I would too quickly skimmed over this line earlier. Python requires open SSL, this or that version um, with X059 da -da -da function in it, which may have been like some patch level thing added to it. I don't know. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a search app cache search and then we'll just do I guess open SSL <clears throat> a lot of results so there's lib SSL this dev development library headers lib SSL 1.0 so it's probably going to pull on this lib SSL 1.0 and that is probably the issue because that's just a little bit too old for this version of Python apparently. But I don't even know for sure if I pulled that in so let me check. Just lib SSL. Right, oh, open SSL and lib SSL. Okay. Dash dev. Yeah, so it's pulling in the apparently the wrong version, an older version. So we need at least 102 or 11. All right, so let's run the help for configure. This kind of stuff happens on compiles. I could have done this ahead of time and ironed out all the kinks and then gone in and make it look easy, but I figure, you know, show a real world upgrade of an old older server and the kind of problems that are typical to run into and how you might deal with them if you're an idiot like me. So there might be some way in here to like speci specify an exact version or location of oh, there's with open SSL and then a directory. What is this? Override cypher. Okay. So with open SSL, I'm going to jot that down real quick, dash dash with, okay, so let's jump over and see, oops, what's going on, I probably opened 10 copies of the browser. It's not loading. There it goes. It's a little CPU activity meter for the Linux machine. Virtual machine. Alright. What is this? It's already running. Of course it is. So we'll... Let's do a good old search. going really slow hmm okay just go to the open SSL official website and download it's kind of a similar thing to downloading the Python source and installing it what's going on okay it did change the latest stable is 111 so the trick is if we can, you know, we can get 111 and then we have the latest stable version and that's probably ideal in general, but our system's so old that 
who knows if 111 might require newer dependency libraries. You know, that's a issue that is easy to run into. So we'll go ahead and try it out. But the other option anyway is get 102 and then we know it's just good enough and it's most likely to be compatible. But yeah, one, one, let's see what it said about make sure that that's not that it's not like you have to have exactly these versions or something. <clears throat> Where is that? Python requires an OpenSSL 1.02 or 1.1 compatible libssl with this param set. Okay, so 1.1 should work, because 1.1.1, if I said that right, that should just be like, usually this is the major version, right? And then this second digit is like, it's a minor version, so it kind of represents like minor feature changes, but maybe just like, you know, maybe an addition to like these web developer tools could if this overall Firefox was version 3 or something and then these web developers could be like 3.1 might add that that's kind of like in general what that's supposed to represent and then this last one's a patch level sort of so or technically even sees like a patch level but this is more like bug and security fixes right there so you're not really gonna see new features as much but you're more likely to you're gonna get this this same interface this 1.1 interface with uh, the updates. Anyway, I'm going to grab this, save file, it's going to auto download to where? Probably downloads folder. Uh oh. I didn't want to open it like that. So, what do we got here? It's supposed to do this. That's weird. Okay, it's probably just in my downloads folder, so do an ls. Okay, cool. So I'll just go ahead and back out to there and then go. We'll do that tar tvf. And then go into downloads, do the open SSL, and it looks like it will expand into its own folder. So we'll run that same command and change it to XVF downloads. Okay, so it's going into the downloads folder to get the file, but it should be extracting it right here in this home directory. So we'll go to CD open. And then one thing, if you're not familiar with how to build it, there's this install file and the readme file. Those are two ways. So you can just do like an LESS, the description, overview. So they're telling you to check out install, which is pretty common. Cool, so that's that hit Q to get back. And then we'll do the install. And at least this isn't the generic install instructions you'll see sometimes. So, Pro 5, da, 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 da. you will need this. You'll need Make, you'll need Pro 5, you'll need this module in addition, a C compiler, development environment, support operating system. Well, that looks good. That doesn't look like it's too hard to do. So, we just need to make sure that we have Perl 5 and Text Template. So, we'll even just search for Perl 5 like that. Perl, Larry Walls, practical support extension language. I heard that it doesn't really stand for that. But anyway, and then. 
actually copy that? Nope. So that was text template. Should throw the word pearl in there too. Text template pearl module. That's what we need. Okay, apt, get, install. That and pearl and run it as super user. So all we really need is that that template thing. It looks like template module, text template module. And this will satisfy the dependencies for the OpenSSL. So then we should be able to do configure. This is kind of cool because then you get to see what's going on. Oh, weird. It's not, a, that's kind of like a little flag right there where it's like how I type configure like a thousand other packages, but they have a shortened one and a capitalized one. So they might do that just so that I actually read the install file. So what does it say? Use the following config instead of configure make make test make install I usually skip the test um, personally because they pull in a bunch of extra dependencies sometimes you have to like wipe out after you do the test you basically obliterate the install so you just do that to test it and then wipe it all out start over and skip the test the next time it looks like the configure options are going to be fairly standard that's what I just want to make sure since it had sort of a non-standard name. Okay, so config, and then we'll see, help. Hmm, probably shouldn't have done help. It looks like it's just gonna go ahead and configure it anyway. If you encounter a problem while building. All right, configure and then make. that quick no error see so there's what an error looks like for the record you usually get it down there like that or maybe you'll scroll back and see something pretty quick but what does it say oh maybe it didn't like that command line option because it's getting pissed on GCC Okay, so we'll run config just like that, x64 whatever Linux. Uh, make. Cool, it must have been, it must just pass on whatever command lines straight to GCC. All right, so this is the OpenSSL finished compiling, and I'm scrolling back a little ways, and I don't see any errors. It just looks like all nice, clean C compiler command lines. So that's cool. And you can see uh, there was like this all warnings. So that is telling it to even show us the petty stuff if there was a problem, and I'm not seeing anything. Anyway, so that all looks good and normally what you would do at this point is we just ran make we ran config make or configure usually make and then as root or sudo you would type make install but that 
with some packages that may install the user usually it will install the user local but we have a uh, an official distribution package already installed of a similar version so that could cause like a conflict there potentially and to just remove the other version there's probably a lot of packages that depend on OpenSSL so I don't know I could try removing it but I'm pretty sure that that like Firefox and just that could turn into a big domino effect of dependency issues and end up removing a big chunk of my system so for now I'm going to leave it in um, one option is again to be able to compile to like just compile and create a Debian package and then just install that in place of the official um, older Debian package but what I'm going to do is I since it's made I'm just going to leave it right where it's at and we only really need this to compile Python against the the Python 3.7 against so really the rest of our system shouldn't need it so I don't know maybe because I put shared libraries that might be an issue because then I might have to leave these around somewhere for it to find them but maybe not I don't know that's just something we'll have to figure out but there they are right there those SO files and you can here I'll do a detailed listing of and you can see that these light blue ones the cyan ones are links to these um, more specific versions so if you had lib so 1.2 you could have this point at whatever this is sort of just like the default latest and greatest or whatever but anyway um, so yeah this in this home directory which is what the tilde represents and the way you can get to your home directory is just a CD to nowhere and you can see we're at that tilde and if I do the path to the working directory it's the same as home vegan a so if I go CD and then uh, well, I'll just type it I have a clunky external keyboard I'm used to my laptop keyboard so you can see that it just like changed directory in the same directory it's still calling it tilde so those are synonymous um, and you can also use the tilde if you really want to and then even the environment variable which is like that so that's just a couple few ways to do that so anyway if we do that and say like reference it like that and say if we're going to pass it into like as a parameter into like some program or something that we don't know if it might leave the context of our current user then we don't want to reference our home directory with the tilde usually so we should use an absolute path from the top from slash home slash vegan a's or whatever your username is okay anyway all that being said let's go back to python um we're gonna have to reconfigure so I have to do a make dist clean and really it seems like it's compiling in under 30 minutes even with the profile guided optimizations which to my knowledge means that it has to do a straight ahead compile run tests on every single module profiling tests and then recompile them with the ideal optimizations. so I'm thinking that should be like two and a half X and I would think Python would take 30 minutes I don't know I'm always amazed by it. it's so small so powerful okay and there's a bunch of other junk at like Python could be even smaller too that's what's amazing it there's just like there's a lot of stuff piled in there with it like uh, when you get into the TK enter and all that stuff like that really brings in a lot more stuff because that brings in the whole TCL I mean with every official complete Python install you effectively have a TCL TK interpreter like you have the entire TCL language at your disposal just like Python and you're using its graphical interface toolkit so anyway something trip on so now we're all cleaned up we're gonna do the configure let's see if I can you know what it's like control R there it is so we can do a dot and you just start typing the command line you want configure and then it was dash dash uh, enable there it is boom enable optimizations so that I think that was control R I pressed and not every terminal might not have that in there that looks like the one oh shoot 
dumb. Okay, do the make disk clean again real quick. No rule to stop, okay. And I forgot to hard code that SSL in, so I'm basically going to run that configure line. Let me go ahead and do a configure help. Make sure I get the syntax right. And then we want to do this, uh, where to go? There it is. With OpenSSL dir. Copy that. Do that and then throw this in there. Dir equals and then we'll go slash home slash and you can use tab completion. To, well, maybe not here. But sometimes you can get away with tab completion. There's all that and then it's Oh man, I'm probably going to get this wrong, so I better, you know what, I wonder if Control-Alt-F1, cool, alright, now I forgot what I was doing, Control-Alt-F7, I need to look at the uh, OpenSSL directory, okay, Control-F1. Login. Oh, not working out so good. Whatever. I'm. Hmm. One trick if you like have a long line like that typed out and you're like, oh man, I want to go use this terminal and find something else or whatever or do something real quick, but I don't want to lose this command line. You can just do a space and then a backslash and hit enter. And that's the line continuation character, but that gets bash or whatever. Uh, read line maybe to store it in uh, like to store it like as if you typed a proper command line so now I can control C but if I would have controlled C like if I type all this and then hit control C if I go back it's not there but you can see when I went back it went to that command with the backslash on it so anyway that's a little trick um, now we can look at we can do a CD or no LS dot dot and then we could see the open SSL. Oh, good thing I didn't just guess. I would have forgot that C. Okay, so now I can back back and we're still in the Python directory. So it's open SSL dash 1.1.1 C. And let's see what happens. And really config, if I would have searched that earlier, um, I should have seen a note about OpenSSL, I'd imagine. Maybe it's detecting the old one, but there might not be a deal in the config script to, uh, maybe that hasn't been updated in a while to make sure that it's at at least 1.02. <clears throat> I guess I could just search for it right now. Okay. I'll probably scroll right past it, I imagine. Looking for open SSL, anything to do with that. I just scroll back up to the top of the config and I'm just scrolling down it. I feel like I wasn't looking at that right. Too much stuff. Hmm. 
launch it. Okay, for exit, no, right here. That's not good. So good thing we didn't start compiling with that. I'm just going to search that out on the internet. What else did it say? Checking whether compiling the link against OpenSSL works. Yes. Checking. It did look in the right directory and it did find it. So that's all good signs. So I must have just not set. I must have supposed to have been explicitly set that in like some config option or something. they have an official page about it there's the set flag synopsis long ugly computery looking function signatures or I should say function declarations since they're not method signatures okay that 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 This doesn't look like it's talking about how to compile it in. Sometimes they'll say stuff like, no, you need to. OK, so it's x509 store CTX. Let's just um, search the config. <coughs> Figure. Number. OK, then we can. Forget how to search and less. I'm not doing good right now. All right, let's do it without the search and just scan it. Root directory of OpenSSL. All right. Okay, I'm not supposed to be here to scan it. I need to be in OpenSSL. And. Creation of the certificates. Installation, see install and notes for different platforms. So maybe notes will have something. Um, do we for sure have all the dependencies? So I guess it'd be notes Unix. Here's something. <clears throat> oh, it won't compile with SSL support greater than 1.10. That is pretty rare. So we caught an edge case. 
that's what the deal is and that kind of goes back to what I was saying about use the old version it's closer to what you'd expect if I would have taken my own advice probably would have figured it out okay so we just need to go back to open SSL download 1.10 We should be able to basically do the same thing with this version instead. And I'll just go ahead and get rid of that one so I don't confuse it. extract verbose and then the file name will be in the downloads folder for me and open SSL 110 then that should I'll go ahead and risk it but it would just end up polluting my home folder if it didn't open to its directory okay let's check it out looks like all the same good old stuff I'm just gonna I'm gonna go for it config as a normal user. Ooh, slightly different. Huh. All my assumptions are making an ass out of you and me today. That's good. That's the very few times I ever resort to like assuming in these kinds of situations. It, it seems to do that. All right, so that's configure, then the make. Alright, OpenSSL 110 <clears throat> compiled. Looks good. I'm going to double check that install file before I get too crazy. That was one thing I don't remember double checking earlier. So there's all our stuff we need. And. Here's the configuration options. So it's going to default to release mode. That's good. I'm just skimming looking for the um, the X509 flag stuff or whatever it was. Did I pass that? There might not even be an option for it. I don't know. My eyes are rolling. use some work in the user-friendly department in this command line crap. I don't know. My, I have a total mental block at this point. I can barely even comprehend what I'm even seeing here. It's like garbage. I don't even want to put in the effort. So 
so I won't. We'll just see if it works. Go back to Python CD. Capital Python. And we need to try and make disk clean just in case. Yeah, there's some junk, so we'll run config. We're going to find that old configure line. So control R dot slash configure enable optimizations and then hit end and change that to I believe it was K open SSL dash one one zero K cool and the configure script should tell us at the end if it's a no-go or not. And if it's a go, then in theory, we should finally have everything, or I should finally have everything you probably did a long time ago, to compile Python 3.7 in Debian 7. So this is obviously like a scenario that you run into where, you know, so many years down the road, I mean, most of the major kind of like 3.4 to 3.7 or whatever you're usually not going to see those upgrades in a distro maybe you'll see 3.4 to 3.5 or something but for the most part if you want something relatively recent you're going to have to do this yourself and like I said this is just I think this is a good example because it's an old server where I was having problems even syncing up the official packages to it let alone pull in something that has some dependency issues via source like we're doing. Oh, still not set. Wow. Okay. I'm going to just copy this whole line. Come back over here, paste and search it out. In Debian too, of all places of course. What is this, the same crap? All right, I need to get specific. We need to do, uh, about this X verify search check host we need set L host. It's hard to tell if that's even an L or a one. Okay. Set L param. Set L one. It is a one. <laughs> Stupid. So there's five matches. There's all the junk expected to name. Uh. All right, there's somebody giving a warning that they're going to push some patches that will force it up to the higher APIs. Hmm. I almost wonder 
if maybe it's looking at the system SSL or something for that. The second line ends up with no, then either SSL is too old or you have Libre. The second line. Or you have Libre SSL. Well, I know I don't have Libre, I don't think, because I downloaded it from the real site you are using, so I believe Vix. definitely gonna bump this up from an easy to a medium install for difficulty level in this context right now better not get to like a hard two-day digging through crap issue still working on that we agree to job support for that. It seemed like everything supported that level of SSL for a long time. Oh, and they got a point that, you know, it's not even good to really target the older ones, maybe. Okay. I don't know. I'm at a loss. I'm going to go get it and get 102. I feel like I'm just must be missing something totally obvious underneath my big nose. It's like, what is going on? We have make Pro 5 NCC dev environment operating system. Hmm. Maybe it's pull it's trying to pull in the header files for the system one because I probably have open SSL dev installed. So I'm going to I'm going to try and remove that package so that it doesn't accidentally capture those ones. I shouldn't have to directly point to lib, I don't think. It was pretty happy. Okay, install prefix. Just getting into like writing stuff. Yeah, I really think it's got to be that. I'm starting to think maybe even 110 would have worked. It said it, that not having the thing we need was a, still an open issue for greater than 110. Um, so I'll do a sudo apt g 
git purge on lib ssl dash dev, I think it is. Make sure it's not going to move any, remove anything too crazy. Looks like just a bunch of other header files that are dependent on it. But if I go in and basically just like almost duplicate the config file um, for the Debian package for the older SSL and just kind of bump that up to 102, then it could satisfy all the dependency issues as well. But anyway, so now that should have got rid of those headers. So now it should have to find the right ones. Oh, did I even, I don't even, I didn't compile it. So I think CD dash goes back to the previous directory you're at. And so we can just do a config dot slash config. Well, seem the older, the further back you go in time, the more gnarly the configs were. All right, looks all right. Is there like any type of log in here? Well, there's a make file, that's good enough. All right. It's done compiling OpenSSL 102S. I don't see any errors. And I don't see the libs in here. There is static library right here. Well, maybe that's good enough. We'll find out. That's weird. I didn't expect it to autocomplete disk clean like that when I press tab. Okay, so now we'll do a control R dot slash configure and it's getting the good one and this is going to be 10.2s if i wasn't recording this at already 50 million hours in i would probably just try 110 again and see if that works but i'm going to go for lowest common denominator and do the 102s and if that doesn't work then I'll probably just delete all of this and figure it out and then give you the iron kinked out version iron dekinked version instead It's 8.20 p.m. I started this at like 4.20 p.m. or something. 4 p.m. Feels like it's taking even longer than before. No! Whether compiling and linking against OpenSSL works, no. <laughs> okay. The easiest thing to do is just check it. I love this, how 
DuckDuckGo, if you don't have cookies, then they'll do all these pop-ups. And it's like, really? I thought you are supposed to not be tracking. Anyway. What is this? Yeah. Without OpenSSL, if... You gotta be kidding me. Boost was configured. Keeps going back to that one. read this mailing list thing we're working on SSL we already did read this this is so fucking dumb so fucking dumb okay so I technically uninstalled that I'm gonna install Open SSL. Wait a minute. Before I do that, make dist do configure 1.0k. Just see if that works because I really don't want to have to do more work. And this would be better than 102, in theory, anyway. Of course it doesn't work. Of course not. Checking for open SSL SSL.h in that folder, yes, that's good. But compiling and linking does not work. <sighs> How fucking stupid. Okay, so my option is to install it. <clears throat> um, SUDO make install. I don't even care if it clobbers everything at this point. But in theory, it's probably installing to user, it looks like local, which is good. So it's all going to go in user local and then. The header files, everything should just be much more likely to be found. It's a lot of man pages I'm never going to read. Still just man pages.
There's that stupid X509 lookup thing. Well, note to self, skip installing the man pages on the production server. <laughs> Fucking wow. Are you kidding me? Now it's all HTML man pages. Just flat out ridiculous. If the majority of people don't need it, it should not be installed by default. all that documentation and none of it probably says shit about what the problem is I'm so mad I don't even want to type now okay anyway I don't even remember what my name is or what I was doing installing that crap so now I can go back to Python I'm just not even gonna trust this CD dot dot I don't think that's the problem, but just to be on the safe side. So. I'm going to get rid of the with open SSL command because I want it to look in the default locations. And in theory, it should look in the user and user local. I wouldn't be overly surprised if it doesn't look in local because sometimes local is not set up by default to be in the paths. But as often as not, at least it is. And it's usually not overly difficult to add it, but I'm just out of practice as far as like, obviously as far as a lot of this DevOps stuff goes, so. If I was in the swing of things, I probably would have had the problem solved by now. I wouldn't, some of this stuff, I've been troubleshooting backwards and stuff and whatever. But for the most part, it's pretty much more or less how I usually do it. And all this stuff, there's different ways to do it. I'm just doing it the most standard, straight ahead on your own personal virtual machine, kind of leaning towards a production machine. That's pretty much all the stuff I do. I do it from that angle because there's always a more complex way to do it. You can always stuff stuff in containers or whatever, but I'm not going to try and cover 
all those, or even using pip environment, pip env, like to set up a virtual environment for different Python projects. I don't do that in my examples either. I just keep it simple and straight ahead. If you want to get more complex, more power to you. All right. Wow, it worked. So, of course, when you're about over it and you've already spit and cussed and quit your job and everything, and then it works. All right. I don't even know what to do anymore. So that was configure. And now we just got to do a make. And we'll remember that J flag. This is trippy. This should work. When all said and done, now I actually have to release this video. And it's going to be longer than shit and have me cussing in it, which I usually don't cuss in any of my videos. Alright, I hope you didn't start celebrating just yet because um, it, it didn't quite go too successful. But it looks like we got an inch further. So what's going on is um, I've got a fan going on in the background, so there's a little bit of wind on this. This mic's kind of a piece of junk. Um, yeah, this warning right here is saying that they had some issue. I mean, everything seemed to go down fine, but the module were removed because they could not be imported. Whatever. Stupid. Be nice if there's like an interactive option where you could say, hey, why don't you ask me before you just do everything and pick the dumbest way. Maybe if I was getting paid to do this right now, it'd be cool because it's like job security. But at the same time, I always feel uncomfortable about that too. I don't like overbilling clients for BS. Like usually if I run into a problem like this where I'm on the clock for a client, I'll give myself about five minutes grace. And then if I'm still doing lookups after five minutes, I'll clock out and I'll go solve the problem in my own little world. And then I'll come back. And sometimes, especially when I first started doing this some years ago, like full time, I um, I would go in and make sure, like that's why I actually set up this virtual machine. I would go in and like mock install everything, like from scratch or package or whatever I was doing. I would go in here, had to whatever it was, I would install it in here and just get it working and go and take detailed notes about all my little steps. And then I would even rehearse that sometimes after I came up with that plan just to double check um, because a lot of those online platforms would have like video recorders that would take snapshots every 10 minutes or something and I was uh, imposter syndrome was an understatement because you know I was like a web 1.0 guy and I'm coming into this like this supposedly like web 3.0 world literally like you know and never even had heard of like virtual private servers and stuff so that was an interesting deal, but anyway, that's how I cut my teeth, and it helped a lot. But now I don't feel so much like whatever. If somebody doesn't realize this is part of the job, like that's what it is. Um, I still, to this day, I won't, I won't bill a client to sit here. I won't just sit here and, like I said, more than five minutes of lookups, and it's on my time. Anyway, um, could not be imported. That's SQL Lite. Oh, it doesn't say which ones. Okay, so I'm gonna put those at the very front. We'll say um, SSL and uh, what was that hash table? Hash lib. Oh, come on. like a similar problem on Mac which is Unix based it's more like free BSD style than uh, Linux but it's closer than Windows that's for sure so configure pre da -da -da -da. standard location oh 
Oh, the sea flags. That's a good idea. It's been so long that didn't even cross my mind. Um, I'm trying to compile it according to these instructions. They've got the C flags. These are includes with the I. And however, it doesn't get built. The log says it built successfully. But. All right, my audio dropped out of my headphones, but I'm going to assume it's still recording. So necessary lookups. Basically, the flags can't be set in the environment. You need to set them alongside. Yeah, this is, that's how you do it. Most people are used to custom compiling, already know that, but um, I could see how somebody could have to learn that the hard way for sure. So configure, we need these flags, that's the trick. Funny thing is they were just doing like a simple little fundamental thing wrong, but they happen to be doing it with what we need. Okay. Control C, I wonder if triple clicking that, whatever. Okay, so I'll go back over here and we'll go back to that configure and we're gonna have to wipe, we're gonna have to disk clean. then we'll run our configure line and I'm gonna go over here well do it in Linux to keep it leaf pad so what do we have here so a is kind of random all right other flags here we don't have any other flags here so these should go at the end of the line you can do them at the very beginning of the line and then they'll set the environment for that statement but since we're doing this in configure the standard practice is you do them at the end of the line and then they get impended into the build environment instead of that configure because we don't care about the C you know we're not going to do care about including some C flag um, speaking of that C flags we need to make sure that that is basically identical to this C++ flag thing so we'll just copy it like they have it control C control V okay and then so this will be the the home vegan A's thing or will it Control C and then LS forward slash user local SSL. So it's probably it's looking like it's gonna go there. Just user local. So let's do user local include. We've got open SSL in there. Yeah. Alright. So where the heck is that? So it's gonna be user local include. User local include. So those are C flags and C plus plus, I thought. I thought that was CXX flags. I don't remember C. I thought it was like that. And then I better double check that. It's been a zillion years. Alright, um, GCC. Let's say configure. C flags, CXX flags. Yeah, that's what these people are showing. That CPP is probably like C preprocessor, CPP flags. 
or you know what I don't even know why I'm looking on there that's that should be uh, if we just go configure you can see down here CPP yeah that is they were right I was wrong and a lot of other people on the internet it looks like are too or who knows maybe these days you could use either one so PP we'll go here copy that stuff out of there uh, and then back to that configure line and that has optimization shared system is that everything okay and paste these in oh wow really we lost all that work you gotta be kidding me accessories leaf pad huh okay I think I memorized it anyway so whatever we'll do C flags equals capital I forward slash user local include and then we got C++ flags and these are basically just command line options that get passed into that respective thing. So if it doesn't even use C++, which to my knowledge it won't, um, it will just, these flags, this particular flag statement won't have any effect. But it is using C, so that one will have an effect. And then LD flags, which is the linker. I believe that was that. And user local lib. So in theory, that should pull in everything. That should pull in, you know, make that user local deal visible. We could add those to the global system. LD flags, C flags, path, whatever. But that's one way to do it right there. A one off way to do it if you don't want to have to deal with system wide configuration changes and stuff. thinking I might as well have added some tried out some C optimization stuff the ones I usually use in the past with like 32-bit processors was um, I'd use the M arch and then pick like a good low common denominator or my exact CPU pretty much that will tune the assembly language then you could do a minus capital O and a two or a three. All right, so that's configured. Da, 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 da. What do we got? Wow. Okay. This is saying everything will work. We've added those include paths. Okay, here we go for this one. Um, we'll do a make and we'll not do that J thing just to be safe. It'll probably take longer, but whatever. Um, Especially when you went into this much trouble, it's just not even you got to rule stuff out, right? Yeah, so I'd use like an M arch flag and uh, the minus O capital three will do basically as many optim that will do full optimizations. It will even expand the size of the executable because it might like inline functions, so it might have redundant code, but that should be faster. Um, and now that I think of it, this is using profile guided optimizations anyway, so that might not be the best idea to like throw a bunch of stuff. But if you look right here, it, it looks like it has that. Like, 
that is the O3 I believe so that's optimization level 3 there's also minus O2 which is usually maybe a little bit safer um, and it will do as much optimization as it can without increasing the size of the executable or library so it won't really lean towards like inlining functions and like that uh, maybe if you tell the compiler to try and inline a function I don't know I haven't experimented with that stuff in a while but that's really the only way you can tell I mean you can't even trust the documentation on some of that stuff you just have to do it and then sometimes even just um, I think it's in minus capital S to tell it to print out the assembly listings and you might have to go in there and just make sure it's doing whatever you think it's doing because you might have read the documentation backwards or I've just I've seen some stuff well big surprise it didn't work again same same issue So, I just decided I'm going to throw this computer away. Just kidding. Um, can't open that because there's no... So, all I can say is wow. And um, I'm going to not do profile guided optimizations this time when I compile. I probably should have stopped doing that a long time ago because it's once you try and compile once or twice and it fails then it's like get rid of all the extraneous optimizations that are just going to slow it down so without that I imagine it could cut the compile time like in half oh, okay so what are we doing here make this clean and and this is actually C preprocessor flags. I spoke too soon. Whenever I was editing the other clip, I realized I saw the help and realized that if I would have read past C, C++, it would have said preprocessor just like I thought. But that's fine because, um, you know, there is no C++ to worry about with this as far as I know. But anyway, this include slash open SSL, I'm guessing, like... What is it not finding? Include open SSL slash open SSL. Um, I'm going to get rid of this preprocessor thing that just doesn't even sit right with me. Probably do that little backslash trick. And then. <clears throat> And there's the lib SSL SO one there. And that's what's complaining about. I don't know if everybody in the world knows it, but just like how you can double click to highlight one word, you can triple click in most modern stuff to highlight the whole thing. That's how I highlight all that at once. All right, let's check this out. It's loading, okay. Need to install. I did the same thing on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and normally everything's more of a pain in the butt on there, but I have to admit, um, custom compiling on Python on there was straightforward, very simple. But otherwise, I'm not a big fan of, definitely not of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. CentOS, which is basically like the open source equivalent, is probably my second favorite besides Debian. Ubuntu is ridiculous, like, give me a break, that's a joke for using on a server in my opinion especially if it's not even the LTS version 
All right. Closer look at the log file. That's what's up. So there's that whole GCCP thread shared. Wow, they got down on this. That's really thorough for a Stack Overflow question. Like, I've traced the whole thing out. Here's all this info. You need to edit modules to specify. Oh yeah, we we're just supposed to automatically like psychically know this. Is are you kidding me? No, oh, I didn't mean to thumbs that up, but maybe if it works, I would. Oh, I'm not even logged in anyway. Um, client. Make sure you have SSL installed. Edit the SSL variable? Hmm. I didn't think about that one. I'm always thinking that's the terminal I want. That is not the terminal I want. Okay. We can do an echo dollar sign SSL. Of course we don't. But. I already did a disk clean. All right, I'll do it with those include folders. And what? Get rid of the optimizations. Get rid of shared. Get rid of all this crap. Every bit of it, except the C flags. And then if it can compile like that, we'll get a less optimized version, but we'll know it's possible. Um, I don't have too much faith in this working as it is. Usually, I shouldn't have to do anything beyond include. Like, if it's in a subdirectory, that should be handled in the source code of like Python or whatever, or OpenSSL itself. LD flags. These are, that's what I was going to double check. So we did check that up here, right? Where is it? LS user local lib. And they were there. It's Python 2 and 3.2. Okay. it out. What is that saying? Okay. Everything's suspect at this point. defaults to system S FFI but not expat
that's cool they remind you to do the optimization thing if you forget okay I do the make minus J8 that's where I'm at I won't be surprised if it runs out of memory or something okay same problem can't open it can't be imported So, I did a quick search in the other browser before I cut back into this clip and um, it must be like a library search order issue or something. Or for some reason it's like, that seems like the only thing it could be because obviously it, there's that user local version of it. Not open shared object file. That is so bizarre. Okay, so I just, I guess I'll just, um, could not open shared. Just try searching for this, I guess. I'm so tired. Oh, that's right, this model's disk thing. I totally forgot about that. Where they have socket module, user local slash SSL. That's what I need to do, I bet. stupid stuff it, it just seems so trivial trivial in hindsight it's like oh man really it's just one little stupid thing like that so I just can set that um, first I'll set that here Then I'll even make sure and do an export. And then we'll go here and we'll even set it here for good measure. Right. And before I do that, this clean. They really should fine tune this configure script or somebody like me or you should go in there and tune it so that it can tell, it can run a test ahead of time to discover whether or not this is going to pan out without having to compile the whole thing. Okay, what I've done here is I've force removed the uh, default open SSL right here with that command. That purges open SSL, that gets rid of the um, configuration files and the binaries. Now if we do an ls SSL anywhere there, it doesn't look like. Is there an O? Oh, no open 
that's a cell. It's looking good. in the make command and cut back in from there. Alright, you're never going to believe this. It didn't work again. I don't even remember what the last thing I tried was. Okay. That was the last thing I tried. search and I just hit the right arrow to basically confirm I want to edit this prompt Go to optimizations Okay, so I, I'm referencing an, another Stack Overflow article now. This one's building Python 3.7 SSL module failed. Looks like an identical error. At least nearly identical. They're trying similar stuff. Looks like they have user local SSL. Make, make all install. I don't think it's a duplication of that one exactly. That one, the problem. See, they're saying you just need to use this command, but if you look, it's from 2011. So that's obviously like way older version. And we can tell just between 1.0 and 1.2, or 1.1, there's been significant changes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and export this again. But what it's doing here is it's actually pushing the specific SSL version to the front of the library path so that it won't search the old one. You can also usually use tab completion with environment variables, and I'm not even getting a tab completion on LD, so... LD. So that environment variable is probably not even set at all. So that's exported, so that should affect all future s sessions that are spawned off of this one, at least. And then they're, they're preceding the configure line, like I had mentioned, as a possibility, but I didn't consider it in this context, <laughs> where what it's doing is it's forcing configure to dig in that SSL path because this person was saying that configure does not convey, convey the message to the C compiler, which needs it. <coughs> so apparently it's not so much an include issue. Where'd it go?
to go ahead and throw in the the C flags for good measure and the LD flags. I don't know why it supposedly wouldn't be passing those through. All right, I'm gonna back out of this real quick to make. I don't even, I'm not even going to trust that, if there's issues in the config. Same problem, big surprise again, right? Okay, I noticed this line, which I don't know, maybe it was there the whole time before, but saying look in setup.py and detect modules for the module's name. shared maybe it says I was looking around for solution where is that set up See if we're even getting that library path. Use your local lib, that's right. Then go back to these locations, which did not include. That's their problem, I think. do a uh, ooh that makes sense right there <clears throat> users there's a lib why couldn't I LS that cannot access user local lib, no such file or directory. Looks like there is right there, is it not visible? Root staff. And if we go into lib, get root and staff permission in there. What is the permissions on user lib root root? I don't 
see why staff should be such a big deal. You heard execute. Oh, the reason it wouldn't CD to there is because of the colon at the end of the directory. Okay, what if... I don't know. LD library path, let's do export. I was putting the dollar sign on there when I was trying to assign it. You're only supposed to use a dollar sign when you want to query the value of it. Okay. Okay, so that works now at least. We know for sure that's the right path. At this point, it's probably almost better to build my own Hello World program against SSL or something and see if I could even do that. Let's find the that setup.py file. Uh, there's one right here. So we'll edit that. Not dash W on nano just means um, don't wrap the lines. And control W to search. W enter to search for the same thing. Paths. Oh, no 
this though. The syntax highlighting is nice. like so convoluted to me. Okay. Let's go ink pads. Alright. Where's the DB ones? Control W, user, local, lib. Has user, local, lib, and include right there. What's this for? Detect multiple cell. system lib directories I don't see user local lib in there That's kind of ridiculous. That's crazy that there's such a long-standing freaking bug in the Python compilation. Or if there is some way to throw those in there, it doesn't seem to be properly documented. Okay. We're going to just save Control X and then hit Y to save it. Save it up for setup.py. I really should have um, done like a cp setup.py to setup.py dot a ridge or something like that to before I edit excuse me that file and I even accidentally hit enter one time in there so who knows I might have accidentally deleted a line or something anyway I don't want to change anything. I don't even really want to rerun configure, but I will. And I'll just run it right over the... No, I need to do a make this clean. And then double check that that change is still in there. So control W, user, local, lib. User local lib, user local include. It's good. Right. Control R to search dot slash configure. Come on, what's going on here? <clears throat> Control R dot slash configure space dash dash. No, I'm gonna 
find the older one. Control R. I should have saved that config line. Copy that. And just paste that down here somewhere. That's looking good. Throw that sucker at the beginning of this just for good measure. And we'll even do the thing. Oh, uh -oh. clue. Get rid of this open SSL thing on there. over and then I'll get rid of that um enable optimization so it should compile quicker okay so the major change here is that user local was added user local lib and user local include were added to the setup.py file in the root directory of the source tree <coughs> or top level directory of the source tree I think I'm going to hyperventilate it looks like it's working I don't have been built by me file instead That's weird that that just says, the following modules have been built by the makefile instead. That was confusing before against the SSL and uh, hashlib errors, but now it's like, instead of what? But anyway, those are obviously gone. Um, this was all boilerplate. Down here, this this junk looked a little bit scary. That I, That's pretty rare to see it like start rolling out of a build script like that. And then all of a sudden, d call GCC at the last minute again. I don't recall the last time I've ever seen a program or a build script do that. But anyway, I don't see any error down there, so that looks good. This looks like a finalization of the build scripts. And then we get back up here, and we see all these are GCC commands, and there's no errors. And we roll, you know, it would have stopped running those and thrown out some errors if there was one. So. In theory, we should have a totally working Python right here. Finally. Wait. Unbelievable amount of time later. Okay, there's Python right here. Let's run it. You gotta do a dot slash to make sure that you actually call this Python. Python error while loading shared libraries. Of course not. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and install it. Um, there's two ways to install it. We need to make sure and do sudo so that we drop to root. Um, if you want you can do sudo bash and just get a full root prompt. So what we're going to do is a make and we can either do install which is probably only a good idea if you've already uninstalled any old versions of Python 3 that might be on your system because if you do a make install it's going to clobber like the Python 3 name um, and there could be some issues around that so but if you want to have your old version of Python 3 and then sort of like install this into the system maybe on a test basis or just to run a few specific scripts or something you can do a make alt install and what that will do is that will make it so that you have to call Python by typing um, Python 3.7 instead of just Python so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm as root, make alt install. If you want to, you know, if you've already uninstalled Python 3, like I said, just go ahead and do make install as root right here. Enter. Should 
consult these notes again. Because what did we do? We did all that. Configure, make all install, and then run these to check the Python versions. And one thing I didn't do on this build was enable optimizations, which, uh, in theory, it should work. And I would definitely, if you haven't, if you're following along and you haven't built with make optimizations, then I'd suggest doing a rebuild. And you'll want to do, probably do a make disk clean. Wouldn't be a bad idea before that. And then just reinstall it. lot of tests. These are all just dot .py scripts. It's crazy. It's not the whole install, but that's all that's flying by right now. I think supposedly with as of this build or a recent Python 3, they're, the Python code itself is there's slightly more Python code itself than there is C code. I don't know if that's just on the module level or throughout the whole the whole deal. All right, so we'll do which Python. It's going to give us that one, but let's do, okay, so if we do Python, you can do minus V, that will give you a version, or you can do Python minus minus version. And that's uh, sort of like GNU POSIX style command line conventions. And the reasoning behind it is that, you know, sometimes you'll have a really long command line and you've got to do all sorts of flags and options on there and, you know, to long-windedly type each one out will just make the command line wrap and get ugly so you can just do like minus V and you don't even have to keep doing minuses you could do like VR da, 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 whatever you wanted um, but then that's not very readable so that's the trade-off so this way is more readable to where you're like oh yeah Python version so it's your preference so we'll do Python 3 version and we can see that's still the old Python 3 installed in the uh, regular user folder so I can do a witch on that Python 3 and there it is and so now we can do the 3.7 no 3.7 oh, big surprise oh you know what too I'm also still root I'm gonna back out of that real quick it's one reason why it's not good to use anything but sudo yeah, I see Python 3.so. What was it saying again if I run that? Oh, it's working now. <laughs> okay, so I just had to install those libraries so that it could find them, but then I had to come back to this folder to actually run it. So that makes me think that the executable, did it not do an alt install properly or something? Okay, but right there you can see Python 3.74. We're we're in that interpreter. Print, and that's working. So get out, huh? Okay. Let's see if we can track down where this Python's installed. There's Python 3.7. So is this not in the path? Echo path user local bin. Which Python 3.7? Weird. So if I go Python, why didn't that work that first time? Did I type something wrong? Python 3.7 minus v. Oh, I was still root and. Uh, I think the root by default won't run at least user local bin. 
so that was just a coincidence that's cool okay so uh, Python 3.7 minus D and just version dash dash help will give you all the command line arguments or maybe not all of them but some of the more popular ones all right so that's that so as you can see I'm, I can be anywhere I'm in the very root top level root folder of the system as a regular user and I just type Python 3.7 and there it is we're in there um, in theory we should have idle now too I don't know if I can just type oh that'll probably be Python 2 idle yeah 273 so then idle 3 will give me probably 3.2's idle yep and then what do we have an idle 3.7 oh looks like we do cool there it is Python 374 it seems to be fairly snappy so far I mean even without the optimizations 3.7 I'm I'm impressed with what it feels like going on under the hood it's just anybody who wants to put up that argument that 2.7 is faster is like try 3.7 packed with features fast cool that's that I forgot to mention one thing about uh, when I had gone in and overridden the installed open SSL I just flashed back on that when I was going to delete these directories so I wanted to cover that so I had purged the um, built-in open SSL installation what I'm going to do is go into the open well I'll go ahead and do sudo app git install open SSL So that should restore the previous one. I'm a little worried about if I actually uninstalled the old one because I had done enabled shared libraries. It might not work. So just open a program. Let's see if we try to do um, app git remove open SSL. Should complain. Okay, let's find one of these programs that depends on it. What is something easy? Open SSL depends on it. Webman. Open JDK. Be nice to know something that would give an upfront error. I mean, Firefox works, right? Hmm. No, I do not want to continue. So Firefox is at least loading. It didn't seem to have a problem either way before, though. It'd probably depend on if it ran into a situation where it had to load and call the share library. I don't know right now. So anyway, I'll go to CD user local. Actually, 1.1. One. So just like you can do a make install, um, I'm a little leery with this one because it's got these non-standard config scripts and even if it is a standard config script make uninstall doesn't always work e anyway but we'll do a sudo make uninstall and see if it's even an option oh yeah so it just rm'd all that stuff out of there failed to remove user local lib okay so it just left the directory but now if we do like an ls forward slash user local include we don't see any open ssl in there and we don't see any open ssl in there either so and then in just user local there is still the ssl folder let's look in there 
so there's some configuration there's a little bit of configuration remnants which is kind of like with the official package installer if you do a remove versus a purge a regular remove will leave your configuration lying around like that that way you can go salvage that or you know whatever but there is always a possibility of conflicts like who knows maybe the search path for the next version of SSL will search user local first and pick up on this config you know so there's those kind of issues so I'm gonna go ahead since it's in user local there really uh, no official package should be using that that uh, folder tree so I'm gonna get rid of I'm not even gonna pit the RMRF right now because that way in case I accidentally hit something that would force the removal so I'm just gonna punch in the directory user local SSL and then I'm gonna hit home and then add the RM minus RF and then I'm gonna let it cry at me that I'm not super user and then I'm gonna sudo that and there's no such file or directory okay so now the uh, custom compiled SSL is removed all the configuration all the libraries now we're going to try and run Python 3.7 huh that's weird I'm getting to try one more time shared library not found I don't remember deleting that shared library it's still there Oh, you know what? The reason is is because it's not in my I don't have an LD library path set. So, where is a good spot to set an LD library path? I'll put this at the beginning. LD library path. Sure, number one stack overflow. Export that, add it to your bash RC. I can never remember which one. It can get so confusing because there's like interactive login prompts, non interactive login prompts. There's, you know, whether or not you call an X term or if you call a, just a standard virtual terminal or, you know, I have LX uh, this thing like. What is this? LX terminal, you know, that could even, it's like, how's that calling up these things? Anyway, that seems to be like the never ending story. One of the stupid deals with Linux, like, especially if you're out of practice like me, it's like, I can't even remember. But anyway, I'll just go to my home directory, do an LS ALH, which will, or, you know, the A will show you the dot files at least, and then we can see that. We have bash RC and profile, and then is there just a plain? Sometimes there's just a dot profile, and I mean you can do like man dot profile or man profile. So you can just type like man bash, man pretty much any command as long as you have the man pages installed and it will give you a nice friendly help about 
bash is just so huge though it's like oh yeah where's where is it even going to start talking about profile i mean i could just hold page down in here and just so that's a little bit crazy what we could do is go back up to the top home and then forward slash i think in less when i was trying to search it was a forward slash two okay forward slash profile no profile. Do not read either the system-wide startup file and etc. profile or any of the personalization files. So we want that one. System-wide etc. profile. Why didn't I think of that? Online helps. Pretty cool. So do a sudo nano must w uh, profile. Oh, you know what? Do a good practice and just do sudo copy profile to profile dot ridge and then we'll do we'll edit this one so you can see there's the path which is just for running regular commands export path da, 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 da. if you don't know one thing to do just come down here and just drop it in right here export and then say uh LD library path, make sure you spell it right, equals user local lib, and then the colon, and then the dollar sign, and throw in the old one, because even though I don't have it right now, who knows, in the future, maybe some program might append something, so that way I make sure and grab their stuff too, instead of overriding it. Okay. Control X, yes to save, override itself, and now should be able to exit out of this terminal. I don't know if it, it might only check, it might only call that script at the actual boot up, so we'll see right here. Um, Lux terminal, Python 3.7. Okay, so if I just export, or even if I just do it at the beginning of the line like this, LD library and then just bit Python 3 right here so that works so we know that's the problem is we just have to get that system wide I think if I reboot it though I'm gonna go ahead and try that with idle real quick too And then we'll do an import SSL. Ooh. Yeah, so it is trying to pull in the shared object. So that's what I was worried about. Um, so maybe you wouldn't, if you were in my exact kind of a scenario, you probably wouldn't want to compile with shared objects because exactly of that. The cool thing with static objects is, you know, if you have plenty of memory, which most systems more or less tend to these days, unless you're running a bunch of Python like interpreters at once, then you'd want to use shared libraries. You know, it doesn't make sense to load like 50 or, you know, 10 SSL modules or something, which is what a static compile will do. It compiles it right in the program itself, and it's there, it's fast, it doesn't have to do any like extra linking work or anything. It's just like it's almost as if it was just built into the program to begin with and uh, so that's an option and they used to recommend that for years to avoid stuff like this if you could spare the RAM and everything but in this you know like I said multiple instances you you want to share stuff if you're in that situation but uh, yeah what I'll probably do is I'll go recompile and maybe do try a static compile and see how that goes with optimizations and whatnot and just you know if you're doing this yourself take notes take notes in a digital notepad or take them on scratch paper and then just remember to punch the important stuff in and save it somewhere where you can reference it and copy and paste it later so on that note I'm going to try real quick uh, go back into OpenSSL 1.1 and I'll just go ahead and do a sudo make install 
and that should put everything all that SSL back like it was and I still have the official older package installed in the regular user tree as well the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is setting that LD library path to the local I don't know we'll see maybe even some of the official packages might end up referencing this new version and maybe it will just be compatible definitely not not the most ideal issue I wouldn't do this on like a greenfield server or container or anything you know like I mean obviously in a container stuff would be separate but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend this unless you're in a pinch and it seems like the best type of a scenario to keep an old server going and relevant but obviously the amount of time I've spent here right now you could almost just one option in the similar situation like I'm in is would it be spin up a brand new server with a more recent distro and all that and uh, just try and try and put back together the server that you were trying to update you know make it more modern and relevant but there's usually a domino effect of dependencies like oh it's got PHP 7 now and your scripts like PHP 5 all sorts of stuff like that can happen but you know, if you test it out and all tests pass, then hey, it should work. Oh, I forgot about how many, um, how much this likes to install. So anyway, you see where that's going and everything. And after that, I'm probably just going to delete all the folders. One thing you can do too is just like zip them up and stick them somewhere and then you effectively have that installer and installer. Back in the day I remember just I would save the config status files because they seem to have all that data and I thought oh I can just save these little tiny config status files rename them to the program save them all in a folder and then just you know pop them back in a directory but I don't think it quite works like that. But if you run the configure script with the exact same options on the same system and everything goes well, then I think after that you should, you know, you should more or less be able to uninstall it. But anyway, there's always, seems like there's always a catch. That keeps it fun. Very last thing ever. <laughs> I forgot to talk about pip, so if you do that whole LD library path thing, um, pip 3.7 install dash dash upgrade pip then it will download and install the newest pip but I forgot you gotta run it as super user just like in Windows or whatever you'd have to run it as an administrator to do this system wide so it uninstalled the old pip and installed the new pip which is the Python package management deal so let's see if we can install Jupyter Lab. So sudo pip install. Or maybe there's something I can't think of anything right now. Pip install. Oh yeah, I gotta run that. So I'm running that sudo, and it looks like it's successfully installing it. I forgot this is kind of a hefty install. Yeah, this is a mega install. But anyway, that's that. And if it doesn't work for you at that point, after this point, then I don't know what to tell you. I would I would have to split this off and do another video tutorial. But I'm going to presume that this should work. 
this is usually the part that would fail if anything so that's how you would do the modules in this since you can't use the official package management system since we've sort of you know we've overridden that we could take these modules download them ourselves and repackage them like the official ones and use those packages in place that's an option too but I just personally usually find this easier okay so that's installed so was it Jupiter notebook I can't even remember how to spell it or oh, it's notebook okay we just have to load that and say Jupiter node. And this should start a server. I don't know if it's going to automatically. Running as root is not recommended. User local share Jupyter lab, writing notebooks. Huh, they think I'm running as root. I guess the script's trying to invoke itself as root. Oh yeah. This is a good example because it's not only a Python module, but it has to run its own little server and everything. Oh, look at that. After all the crap we've been through, it's so nice to see this. So you could just say new Python 3. And now this is also running the IPython interpreter, which if you're familiar with, you remember this prompt. So we can just do a good old print statement. And then run that. There it is. 